Hello everyone, this is Stefan from Lush and Salty Aquariums. You're looking at my 10 gallon uh, tank that I used to call a biotope because that's how I originally envisioned it. It was to be specifically for the Indian pea puffer and I used this great piece of driftwood. I think it's a large piece of spiderwood as an anchoring part of the aquascape. And then I took uh, plants that I got at a nursery and just random cuttings from people and basically stuck them within the uh, crags of this hunk of wood. I knew it would work. I wasn't sure which plants would do well and which would do mediocre, but I knew they would all at least try to survive. And I've been super pleasantly surprised. I really dig this sort of spiral plant. Look what it does. I cut these because they will come right out into this room for a foot or two. And then this stuff, which I don't know the name for, I actually picked up one or two random cuttings from my man Carlos at Backyard Aquatics in Napa. I had bought some Daphnia from him. I've done videos about that, about the Daphnia and raising those cultures. And he just threw in a couple of these because um, I asked him if he had anything. I, I was doing this, this biotope for a science project for one of my daughters, blah, blah, blah. And he threw those in. And now I've got these plants going every which way and I need only to snip them and I could start another one in other tanks, which I have done. I think I have more than I need in this one. As a matter of fact, the plants, excuse this reflection, kind of are the story of this tank, even though there's a ton of fish in it. I had to put, I didn't have to do anything. I put a school of uh, all, all these male guppies that I raised up from Fry. They're basically, a, a, fancy guppy, a mosaic strain, and I keep them in here with no females. I also have a group of these white high fin tetras um, that I got at Petco. I always mention Petco because I'm not afraid or ashamed to admit it. This is a super common fish there. I think highly underrated. And my thought was because the pea puffers are in here, I just never see them. So I got bored and I wanted to see something and I thought it would be badass to get these kind of white ghosts which would pop against what was becoming an ever more darker interior. I've got two lights over this system, but because of the wood and the emerged plants, it stays sort of dark and brooding like a haunted forest, which is cool. I can live with that. and. Here you see one of my many betas. Oh, he's chasing one, but the aggression is rare in all my tanks. Um, this fish should not be in a community tank per se, but he's been in here uh, half a year now, as, as is most of these guys. And because of all this cover and the care I take, they all seem to get along just fine. And there's even pea puffers in here. It's so inappropriate what I've done. But the result is pretty damn good. I can tell the pea puffers are alive and well because these are all the empty snail shells proving they're feeding. They're the only creature that will um, eat a snail, especially in that fashion where they just pull out the uh, flesh from the first part of the animal and discard the shell. And I imagine the catfish and, and shrimp sort of would nibble on the rest and basically the snail shells just gather. I pull them out when I do a water change, but look at that substrate. Over a year in such a tangle of a tank with all these inhabitants, nary a piece of debris on the ground. So I can't explain it, it's good luck and it's part of my three-pronged formula for aquarium keeping and nano tanks in particular. Tons of plants, good light, and water changes. If you do that, you can keep controversial species 
in a community tank, you can overstock the fish. Um, you just have to make sure the plants are photosynthesizing and thriving. And even in this tank, I just don't have much algae. Here's a group of crypts that are colonizing and slowly moving in that direction and this direction. I've got Anubias that I've stuck within the wood, just like I did the emerged plants, but these were submerged and they're doing really well. And there's barely any algae on those leaves. These are pieces of moss, Christmas moss and Java moss. And I put them on some of the wood and they're doing really well. I mean, given less and less light is getting through all this wood and plant and of course frogbit and the ubiquitous duckweed. One thing I should tell you, um, or I will tell you, is I added an L, a really cheap little pump to move the water on this side of the tank because it was getting a little stagnant up here, which I didn't think bothered the fish, but it bothered me. So I added that little pump, they're like 20 bucks on Amazon, and I set it on a low setting and it pushes the water this way and then of course on the other side of the tank I have an Aquion hang on back filter Fluval makes it and there's also white label brands uh, it's very typical so it's filtering a lot of water there and this pump is shooting it out there you can see the action on the fern here it also helps uh, keep the water clean and fresh and moving so that the fish can breathe better and I don't know I'm really happy with the result what I'm getting less happy with is the very reason I added other fish in the first place I can I could not see or find the pea puffers and I had like five in here and so now the darkness and all that plant growth is making it sort of uh, a, the primary feature of this tank and the inhabitants sort of uh, are it's, are it's subservient and <clears throat> do I like that? Do you like that? I don't know, I think it's pretty cool, but I'm starting to think I need to clear some of this out so that the light can break through just to see what would happen. I wish I could get some feedback from you people just to hear your opinion. Um, please feel free to do that. And in the event that you don't, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. As usual, always keep your hands in the tank. Ciao for now.